My name is Dr. Dave Brumbaugh. I'm a professor at Northern Arizona University, and we are approximately 15 miles south of Flagstaff, Arizona, adjacent to Lake Mary. And at this particular location, I'm standing in front of an exposure of the Lake Mary Fault, which is a, an important feature. But it's approximately 40 kilometers long, stretches from just south of uh, Mormon Lake up into the north so that it passes across the city limits of Flagstaff into southern Flagstaff. And uh, this makes it a fairly dangerous fault. The maximum size earthquake that one could conceive of, of taking place if the entire fault moved would be about a magnitude 6.9. There have been a couple estimates of the maximum size of an earthquake from this fault, and, and the other one would be about 7.0, so they're pretty close, actually. The Lake Mary Fault, as you can see behind me here uh, from this kind of an exposure, is a very steep fault. It's what we would call almost a vertical fault, and the kinds of faults that it belongs to is a category that occur and slip, releasing earthquake energy, when the crust of the earth is being pulled apart. The fault itself is, in map view, not a single beautiful little straight line. It weaves back and forth, and every time the fault changes its direction in map view, that's what we call the boundary of a segment of the fault. And what often happens with faults like this, if uh, earthquake energy is present and ready to be released, is that only one segment of the fault may fail. I mentioned earlier that um, the maximum size earthquake we could have would be a 6.9 or 7 if the entire length of the fault failed, which is not that common. If one individual segment failed, then that's less earthquake energy being released. And the estimates from studies that have been done in the past suggest that uh, if any one of the segments failed, that would be more like a 6.3. By looking at the exposures in the Flagstaff area, we can see that this very steep, nearly vertical fault has, in fact, uh, about 300 at least feet of movement on it, or slip, displacing the limestone on both sides of the fault. Now, this didn't happen all at once. In fact, for a magnitude 6 to 6.5 earthquake, you're probably looking at a couple feet of movement in any individual earthquake event. Now, the earthquakes we had in the early part of the 1900s, the three which were likely not on this fault, were a 6.2 in 1906, a 6.0 in 1910, and another 6.2 in 1912. So that sort of size of earthquake is certainly normal for this region. This area only has a history which goes back about 100 years, a written history. And the very first earthquake in this area occurred in 1892. We don't know if it was on this particular fault or not, but it was about a magnitude 5 earthquake. In June of 2011, there was another swarm of small earthquakes along this fault. So it, it definitely is still an active fault. As far as prediction goes, people cannot predict earthquakes. Even in cases where you have what you might call a very active earthquake area, like in California, because it's a very complicated sort of a phenomena. So the best we can do is kind of forecast. Um, the last large earthquake in the Flagstaff region, not on this particular fault, was in 1993. That was a 5.3 earthquake, which did a little bit of damage at the Grand Canyon and woke up a whole bunch of people in Flagstaff. So what's the answer here? The answer is pretty clear. We can't predict. We know it's going to happen. We know it could be large and it could be serious for the city of Flagstaff. So the answer is to be prepared for the worst case thing that could happen if a large earthquake were to occur in this fault.